Today is November 13th at the time of recording this video. It is currently 3.45, 4 a.m., somewhere around that time frame. And yes, even though I was supposed to upload this technically yesterday, uh, listen, my sleep schedule is fucked at the moment. So yes, it still feels like the 12th to me. So this still counts as a daily upload. I have not broken my challenge yet, all right? But in today's video, we are going to be going over the Pentakill line. And part of the reason why this video is so late because uh, there's, there's a lot of units. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking units in the Pentacle Vertical, so we're gonna be here for a while. So I'm going to give you a fair warning. You probably already knew this because I don't know how long this video is, but you will know. Uh, this is gonna be a doozy. We got a lot of different verticals to cover, a lot of different headlines to cover, a lot of different variations to cover, a lot of different clusters to cover. So listen, I highly advise grab a drink, get your favorite snack. Maybe if you want something playing in the background while you gotta like do the dishes, or maybe you wanna like study and listen to some TFT content as you're studying, which by the way, uh, not good practice. Uh, you should close the video if that's what you're doing, focus on your work, but you get the idea. We're gonna be here for a while, okay? But if you need something in the background, I'm your guy, all right? I got you covered. So let's just get onto the video because again, we got a lot to cover. So first off, a quick overview of the Pentakill vertical in case you are unfamiliar with the units and you haven't been playing pve at all olaf is our one cost a pentakill bruiser nar is our two cost who is a mosher super fan kale who is an edgelord very edgy mordekaiser three cost who is our sentinel viego our first carry who is a four cost who is an edgelord as well Karthus, who is our other carry inside of this vertical who is an executioner and yorick who is a guardian mosher so a lot of really interesting units to be talking about, a lot of different headliners to be playing around. Again, Viego Cardus are the main carries of this vertical, both of them being the four, premier forecast within the set, and not the set, sorry, the vertical. And Yorick as well, who is a very interesting five cost as well. Um, I don't think people have really figured out how to play him just yet, but I believe we have some level or some semblance of how to approach Yorick, at least within this video, and he will be the last unit we're talking about today. But first off, let's go over the one cost headliner of the vertical, which is Olaf. If you are playing around in an Olaf reroll or a Olaf headliner, um, it's a pretty interesting spot to be in. It's not very traditional compared to other one costs, at least we've seen within recent sets at eight, set nine, where if you get a three-star one cost, you kind of expect to keep this three-star one cost for the rest of the game, right? A very good example of this is something like Kale 3 back in set nine, where once you get a Kale 3, you just tempoed and you kept that board until level nine and you just kept that Kale 3 for basically the entire game. Nowadays, set 10, it's a bit different. One cost rerolls, they'll temple you very hard very hard throughout the early middle game but they're gonna fall off they will fall off you will feel them fall off and don't expect to end your board with three star one cards ideally you are gonna pivot off into something like a two star illusion two star gin whatever try to tempo to nine and just switch it out from there um again one cost rerolls are just not going to be that strong within this set in general that just doesn't follow the philosophy of the set the set is very more pertained and focused on flex play not so much on reroll obviously you can still play it whenever it's given to you but understand that especially one cost two cost rerolls um unless the numbers are completely out of whack or something is like a pretty significant outlier you're not going to be winning lobbies ending the game with like a three star one cost most of the time some three cost two three star two cost depending on it depends on the two cost but it, it depends but let's talk about this composition in particular olaf bis ginsu bt qss if they look any bit familiar to you it's because they are the exact same as warwick bis from set nine with ravenous hunter just olaf just loves to stack and stack the attack speed basically for every one percent missing health he just gains extra attack speed which is super super cool his headliner effect by the way just some bonus stats 75 hp 10 armor 10 mr at the time of recording this video but that could very well change but regardless just very simple stats um if you happen to roll for the olaf uh you do want to try to pick up the tom kenches as well tk who is a very very strong one cost tank by the way one of the strongest um very I don't know, I was about to say very strong, but I said that already. He's strong, all right? He's a strong three. Uh, you get the idea. Um, if you find him, great. But again, like these one cost boards are something you kind of want to natural more than like have to really dig too much to find. So most of the time, it's going to be TK2 and I'm getting interrupted by a truck outside. But 
you just want to try the tempo if you are way too far off the TK, but you find the Olaf that you're super, super early. There's no reason to keep digging to try to find the three-star top catch. It just, it is what it is. But if you happen to find it, feel free to itemize it. It's still a menace of a tank, especially throughout the early to mid game and even a bit, a little bit into the late game. So you can, you can keep him around for quite a while and he'll do fantastic work. Um, this vertical, by the way, there are multiple different ways of playing around it. Um, as you progress throughout the game, you do want to eventually just tech further and further upwards towards the vertical, specifically bruisers. And it's just a very, very simple board. It's just the bruiser reroll of the set, very similar to Cho'Gath reroll from set nine, except unlike Cho'Gath reroll, this board definitely falls off um, and it doesn't scale very well into the late game. Again, you want to pivot off this whenever you get the chance. This is, by the way, the Olaf board if you are playing the bruiser headliner. That's why it's six out of six bruiser here, even though there are only five on the board. Um, the idea is very simple. It's just that instead of the Karthus, this is probably just going to be a Kale. Kale item holds for your Karthus until you find the Karthus. Uh, and then this Zach, you just play it as soon as you find it. If you don't have it until then, it is what it is. You just play four bruiser, flex something else. Very, very straightforward. Again, Zach is going to be the hardest thing to find, but once you get six bruiser, you're, you're tempoing for quite a while. You're You'll, you'll be okay. Uh, but that's basically it for Olaf. Let's move on to the second one, which is Nar. And Nar, I'm not going to really talk about Nar in terms of headliner for Pentakill um, or for Mosher. I don't think at the time of recording, uh, I, Mosher, Nar, or Pentakill, Nar is relatively any good. The only decent board uh, that I can think of is this one, which is the super fan board. Um, by the way, these boards, especially the one cost, two cost boards, they're not like S tier boards. No, the majority of these boards are not S tier boards, right? The, that's not what this video is about. This video is to showcase how to play around the different headliners in case they ever become meta or in case you are offered their line. And even though they might be a B tier board, you can still, you know, secure top fours with them. Um, if so be it, right? So, you know, I want you to be familiar with these boards. I don't want you to be going to the game not knowing anything at all, okay? So again, they're not S tier boards. So expect every single one of these boards to do well. And I will definitely tell you which ones have at least recently do it, been doing well or not doing well, okay? I got you, okay? Don't worry. But anyways, let's talk about the super fan real quick. So five super fan, this revolves around the idea that you have to hit NAR for your headliner, specifically super fan and five super fan in particular. Uh, the reason being is because five super fan actually gives your NAR a radiant item. It's your headliner, but it gives NAR in particular a radiant Sterax. So radiant Sterax, BT, Titans, it's very, very easy to get this online uh, with the radiant item. Anything less than five super fan though does feel pretty fake. Most of the time when you are playing around super fan, it is to just tempo with throughout the early game. Things like early Canon Lilias, uh, one of them being a super fan, ideally like Canon plus two, right? So you have three. Um, very very strong early game but most of the time you don't really want to commit to the five because you're playing stuff like Lilia, you're playing stuff like a Kennen, right you're playing stuff like vi onto this board which is very very like not high quality units so that is something to keep in mind obviously you, do, you may or may not have noticed the twitch is in here as well with the vi um it's just because punk is just so good in reroll comps plus you get to itemize the twitch as well if you find extra items which is super dope um but again this board at least at the time of recording this video is just not that strong it's very fun to play if you happen to find the super fan nar very early on but it's not a very common board that i would recommend for most people at the best i would say this average is like a fourth and then um from like and it depends on what you're hitting right if you're hitting pretty off tempo you're not going to do very well with it right but i mean hey if you hit within tempo i'm sure it can do decent things right but it's not something that you would win out with but again it's a really interesting board so i highly recommend playing it but that's basically it for nar oh by the way i should mention this his headliner effect at combat start he will immediately cast his ability transform into mega nar uh the reason why i have him in the back here is just because you don't want him taking aggro off rip because once nar starts taking aggro then it becomes a bit of a problem you want him to jump immediately and start doing work but again really fun board not the strongest of boards but definitely something to consider and have some fun with if you ever find yourself in that situation uh moving on kale um yeah just <sighs> uh yeah uh moving on mordekaiser uh mordekaiser is actually good uh mordekaiser right now is definitely i would say an s uh, a plus s minus tier somewhere within that range uh in terms of compositions really really strong composition to be playing around the more three the ribbon three for the dual carry in case you are not aware already ribbon three is doing some pretty disgusting things currently 
Um, but you can still play in conjunction with Mordekaiser and even make Mordekaiser the primary carry, Riven the secondary, and that is totally totally fine this is a five edgelord five pentakill board so we are playing a plus two on the mordekaiser here and we're just playing you know pentakill because it just makes sense within this context obviously the only unit that kind of like sticks out like a thor sore thumb here is the nar because this could be any pentakill unit right ideally it obviously becomes the yorick but it could still i mean let's be realistic right it's probably gonna be a nar until you find the yorick because uh, we're rolling on 7 for quite a while here. It's a very fun board to play, and Riven 3 is especially a fucking menace. Mordekaiser 2, or Mordekaiser 3 rather, sorry. Very, very strong unit as well. Um, his spell just does so much AoE damage, so actually even sandwiching him somewhere inside of the middle is totally fine. I, I can totally see justification for that. Idea being is that Mordekaiser will just get more AoE value out of his ultimate and just do a shitload of damage. His headliner effect, by the way, he gets plus 100 HP, plus 5 AP whenever his ability kills and permanently gains one percent permanent ap so mordekaiser especially if you find an early one will keep scaling and scaling and scaling as the game progresses so very early mordekaiser headliners are something you can definitely consider if your items are looking good for it in terms of bis i don't exactly know exactly what it is to be honest but pinky ap in general is probably the way to go especially you want healing on this guy so gunblade is for sure somewhere in there hodge might be fine with hodge jg but you can also do things like titans things like crown guard these are all really really good get him really really tanky sustain because he is a melee unit he does need to be able to soak some level of damage so all these items again that get him tanky but also you know provide him with ap stats very very great i think archangels i've seen some people running archangels mordekaiser as well I, I'm not the biggest fan of it, only because I think Archangels takes a bit too long for Mordekaiser to scale up the damage. He doesn't last like an eternity. He does mostly of the time die. So, you know, just keep that in mind. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Archangels, but it's something you could run. I just don't think it's that great. Uh, Mordekaiser also, as a Sentinel, in terms of the headliner effect, is also really, really interesting as well. You do have this like Mordekaiser 3 Echo 3 line. Um, I don't, I don't really know anybody who's played this line before. I've not seen anybody play this line before. Um, this is actually just more theory. The idea being is that because you're rolling on seven for three cost units, you can like just basically either roll for Echo and Nico in conjunction with the Mordekaiser, or actually you could just like, you know, you could just, yeah. I mean, no, 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 yeah, I, yeah. Wow, I just, you ever have a moment where you reach a conclusion, realize the conclusion is wrong, and then you reevaluate the conclusion, but then realize the conclusion was actually right? No? Okay. I did. I That just happened in my head. That was weird. Because I, I just agreed, then disagreed, but then I agreed with myself at the very end, which is insane. Um, I was thinking about whether or not you played around Mordekaiser, Headliner, uh, regardless of Echo and Nico. I, I, I know you don't care. I I care, okay? Anyways. Um, the items here, by the way, sorry, before I got incredibly sidetracked. Um, Echo and Nico, these guys, uh, they're interchangeable. So, like, quite honestly, like, Nico carry, Echo carry, both are fine, does not matter. They both deal, actually, very surprising amounts of damage. Um, Nico, although I will say this, though, her damage mostly relies on the highest HP ally that you have. So, uh, ideally, you don't really want these kinds of items on Nico. you kind of want tank instead. But Echo can definitely make use of things like Crown Guard, Ionic Spark, Hodge, GG, all of that good stuff. Really, really interesting unit to be playing around as a potential carry alongside Mordekaiser. Again, very, very cool board to play here. Um, I, I, I would recommend trying it out. I think it's fun, but is it like the best of best? Uh, I don't really, I honestly don't really know where it stands in the current meta. Uh, again, I played it very, very little. I've only played it once and I've, I don't think I've really seen anybody else play it, at least to my knowledge. So give it a try. Let me know what you think about it. But again, very, very fun board. Uh, moving on. Karthus, our first four cost premier carry. And again, like we've talked about in previous videos, we're going to be talking about clusters for the four cost and five cost because it is very difficult to create comp boards, like entire compositions for particular four cost and five cost because the set is so unbelievably flexible, which is very fun, but very, very difficult to explain everything, right? So again, clusters, again, if you don't know what a cluster is, I'll briefly explain it. Clusters are basically small groups of units, like a board within a board three, four, five, six different units that you can put together because their traits just work so well in conjunction with one another. And you can either pair one cluster with a different cluster to try and build a board or maybe one cluster and flex around it to try to build your board. This is, again, I think this is a concept that will be a lot more prevalent within set 10. So 
this is why I'll be throwing out the term a lot. And I don't think anybody besides myself uses the term, so I will be defining it almost every single time I have to bring it up. I apologize if you watch me very often and I keep explaining clusters. I, yeah, I, it is what it is. Like some people didn't watch the last video. I, 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 it is what it is. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> the Karthus, first one, this is the Executioner uh, Karthus Cluster. Uh, this is the ideal one, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's really cool when you get to just play Karthus and Akali dual carry. And then basically the idea is, is that with Karthus and Akali, you basically are able to play three out of four Executioner. And then you just tech in the Vex here, which gives you the four. And Akali really likes having her bling bonus. Basically, she heals for 20% of the damage dealt with her ability, which is a lot. So being able to get that bling bonus through true damage, you get the Echo here and then Echo provides sentinel which provides the blitzcrank justification so now you have a main ad carry a main ap carry and a main tank so again a very very cool board to play around as you may also have noticed we don't really have pentakill in here i think pentakill is just something that you can have but it's not necessary uh to do well like the the biggest problem that i also find with pentakill is that in terms of unit quality it's very difficult to find good units that you could justify keeping on your end game board obviously uh york is completely fine but now you're two out of three and like you could play maybe four sentinel but then you're stuck playing something like a garen on your board and that's not very gucci right uh maybe instead you could play something like i don't know maybe a like a gnar maybe it gives you moshers and i guess it's okay but you're playing a gnar on your board which is kind of questionable right so it's it's Pentakill is like, it's nice, but I don't think it's like that necessary, um, especially if you're playing around Karthus, but I mean, who knows? Maybe like two weeks, three weeks, maybe two days down the line, um, people are like, hey, no, that's bullshit. You need Pentakill no matter what if you're running a Pentakill carry. Um, and hopefully that is the case. I mean, it normally should be the case, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, again, I don't think it matters that much, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, one of the bigger reasons I also think it doesn't matter too much is because at least right now in the current state of the meta, uh, Karthus just isn't that great of a four cost, just relative to the other ones that are currently within the set. It's a very 80 centric meta right now, with the exception of Twisted Fate. So Karthus kind of doesn't get to shine very much in the current set, or in the current meta. He does, he will eventually shine. But the big thing that really enables Karthus, by the way, is actually Sniper's Focus. And this is something I have no idea how the dev team is going to balance, to be completely honest, without like absolutely gutting Sniper's Focus or Karthus, because Sniper's Focus card this is absolutely disgusting. It's just an abomination of a unit. It just, basically the idea is that Sniper's Focus works with Karthus' ult. So if you have like a full ass board here and your opponent's carry, let's say it's like a Samira 3, for example, right? It's over on the far corner here. Um, and then Karthus ult and it hits the Samira, she's dead. She, dude, this bitch is like eight, wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight hexes, nine hexes away. Sniper's Focus does how much bonus damage? 9% for each hex that are away from each other, that's like 72% bonus damage. That's a lot. So, uh, yeah, this shit is fucking busted. I don't know how they're gonna, I don't know how they're gonna alleviate it. Maybe they'll even take out Sniper's Focus because it's so unhealthy for Karthus, but I mean, I have no, I have no fucking clue. But if you ever have that uh, one portal that gives you an Orn artifact, or maybe you took Portable Forge or 2-1, for example, because you're a lunatic, uh, and you find Sniper's Focus, I think you could quite honestly maybe just hard force Karthus and like it could maybe work out. Hidden tech. But yeah, really cool board. Again, um, really fun to play around. And I think with the new Akali changes, this is a lot more viable. I haven't had a chance myself to try out the new Akali, at least based off the PBE changes, but let me know what you think. And let me know if you are having success or maybe you are failing with this board. I'd love to hear it. Uh, moving on, Pentakill headliner for Karthus. Again, it's a very, very simple cluster to be thinking about. It's basically the exact same as this. The only difference is that um, there's a York on our board here instead of a Vex. The idea is that we're just playing two Executioners instead of four, so we don't need the Vex onto our board anymore. We just need a third Pentakill unit, any Pentakill unit, it does not matter, to fill out the three here for Karthus. Again, we are playing Karthus with the Akali dual carry. We've already talked about the Echo and the Blitzcrank justifications. We don't have to go over it again. But again, very simple clusters to be playing around Karthus. Uh, just remember, Akali Blitzcrank Echo, and you should be good to go nine times out of ten. Uh, moving on, Viego Edgelord. Now, Viego Edgelord, um, it's a little hard to say what actually is the best board for Viego, what units work well in conjunction with him. And the biggest reason why it's a little hard to say is because, well, one, Viego just isn't that great of a unit, so it's hard to test a unit that sucks. But also, two, I mean, you can understand the trait web, but 
Viego in general, it's like, he, he's kind of a very awkward unit to be playing around in general. You never really want to be playing around Viego in particular. Right now, at least, especially Riven and Yone, uh, in terms of edgelords, just completely outclass him. So I don't know what the deal yo is. Obviously, there's going to be some patches coming up and maybe Viego gets a bit more love. But for now, this is sort of the main cluster. The main cluster that I believe is going on is sort of a Viego Kale pairing. Um, the big pair is because uh, these are both within Pentakill and they're both edgelords. So that's super cool. So you just get the Mordekaiser here to fill out the Pentakill and Blitzcrank here to fill out the Sentinel. It's a very, very simple, straightforward board. Um, and again, I think once Viego gets a bit more buffs, it should be really good. Uh, but until then, we'll wait and see. But again, very simple cluster to be playing around. And yeah, there's also actually um, a bit of a higher cap version of this cluster which is this one with Kane and Yorick. Uh, the idea is basically that instead of for your edgelord, um, when you're dropping the Kale, because she fulfills two of the verticals, right? She fulfills edgelord and pentacle. You're gonna have to fill both of those back up again. So you play around the Kane and you play around the Yorick here because these are the best versions of those units. And then Mordekaiser here for the Sentinel and again for Blitzcrank. Um, whenever you're playing around three pentacle, expect to see Mordekaiser a lot because Mordekaiser is just able to fill the void very easily because Sentinel is such a strong trait. Um, that's why you'll see Blitzcrank a lot within the pentacle kill tree line um kane by the way in case you don't know how to itemize this guy jg hodge titans i think is the best way to go about it um if you want like a heuristic i believe gwen items back in early set to nine are basically the exact same as kane if you played set four apparently i guess they're the same um i didn't play set four so i don't know that but gwen was very recent right Basically, any tanky AP healing items, Gunblade, Archangel, Spark, like all of these are good and they work perfectly fine with Kane. Uh, one last thing to talk about real quick, Viego, Headliner, his effect is just 150 HP plus 10% attack speed. Very dull, very boring, nothing to really cover. But that basically covers the Pentakill, or sorry, the Edgelord Headliner for Viego. Let's talk about the Pentakill one. And again, it's very similar. There isn't too much to cover. We've already covered the base stats, the base headliner effect. Uh, it's just Blitz, Kale, Kane. Really, really simple cluster to play around. And it's incredibly flexible. You can play vertically upwards in the Pentakill line. You can play maybe Disco, which I think, by the way, I, I want to show off the board because I think this is really cool. Uh, I think Viego Twisted Fate is so fucking cool. Um, basically, it utilizes an AD carry and AP carry, a strong tank with the Blitzcrank. You aren't that tanky because your only tank is like your real tank is like just Blitzcrank and like nothing else. Like you have the Echo, you have the Gragas as well, and you have Kane who is fine. But uh, for the most part, this is sort of like your end game board. Your level eight actually you just drop the Sona. Sona is just in there for Spellweaver and Beatmaker, I believe, or Beatmaster, Master Beater, Mixed Master. Sorry. So um, she just goes in at nine just to fulfill the Spellweaver right but that's not that important right but it's good for sona at level nine so it is what it is and this is again it's a such a cool and fun board but it's not a board i think a lot of people have been playing recently um just because again viego just comparatively to other ad units is just not as impactful and typically at least right now from what i've seen a lot of people when they think of disco they think of dazzlers so they're thinking about ziggs and they're thinking about other you know dazzler units to play around like bard and jazz so it's you know i, I wish this board got a bit more love but please try it out it's super super fun to play um twisted fate is just a really cool unit in general and viego whenever he pops off he like he like pops off he does really cool stuff um but it's a very hard board to hit but again you get the idea the viego pentakill cluster it's very very flexible play whatever your heart desires and just keep building outwards and outwards and outwards and see what you can find again i love this board i think it's super super fun um i just hope Viego gets a bit more love in future patches. Okay, moving on now, we are now onto our final unit, which is going to be our Yorick. Um, again, Yorick with headliners, it's not really something that you are really aiming for in the late game compared to other five cost headliners. Typically, you're playing around stuff like Olawi headliners, stuff like Jin or uh, Lucian, right? Even Sona right now, because she's fucking turbo busted. Uh, Ziggs, right? Yorick is sort of not everyone's first choice, but he's still a very, very cool unit, and he definitely has a lot of potential to carry. 
Um, for the York cluster, at least from what I can see, if you're actually trying to run him as a carry, uh, first off, itemization rise real quick, BT, Sterax, Titans, I think there isn't really much else that's that much better. Um, they're very similar to uh, Rek'Sai reroll items from set 9, if that's something that you want. Again, it's a heuristic if you need it. Um, his headliner effect, by the way, uh, he just summons two extra ghouls, and the big ghoul is even bigger and deals bonus percentage extra damage. So. He's actually like a really, really strong carry that you can rely on in the late game, especially if you've been playing like Crowd Diver to get through your mid game. Um, Yorick is actually a pretty potential option to be playing around because your items are going to fit so well and transition so seamlessly into this Yorick line. Obviously, uh, we do have Thresh as well here for Guardians. These are going to be our premier two star, our two star four cost tank. Uh, not the Blitzcrank, surprisingly enough here, but I mean, it is what it is. I think it's fine. Kale and Viego as well. This is just so that you can get the two out of three edgelords that you need to play into Kane, who is going to be a really, really strong secondary carry with JG, Hodge, and Titans. Again, you'd probably only play this line and this headliner in particular if you were playing around crowd divers slash edgelords throughout the mid game and you tempoed into like a fast nine or maybe during level eight even you found like a two-star York somewhere along the way, right? So again, it's a very, very cool board, very, very niche board, I may even argue. But again, you can just flex around whatever, do different, like maybe you need more front line, maybe tech in the Blitzcrank, maybe you need more backline, maybe tech in the Jazz with the Lucian and whatever. You get the idea. But very, very flexible, and I think this is super, super fun. Obviously, this is plus two Mosher. Um, I don't think the other ones are as effective in terms of carrying Yorick. But plus two Mosher is best because I think in terms of Mosher unit quality, it's just not that very high. Um, Poppy is like the premier forecast, but I think she's like all right. Although I don't really like the idea of playing Poppy on my board in general, just because if I'm playing around, especially like a two star five cost, right? Yorick, I'd rather itemize him than the Poppy. So like, why would I have a dead unit on my board? But moving on, Yorick Guardian. Um, I'm only going to talk about this a little bit just because I don't think it's like the worst thing in the world. But basically the idea is, is that you can just play around like six guardian frontline and then flex whatever you want in the back line. So even though we don't have like rapid fire or big shot or whatever in the back line, we can just tech these units in and just call it a day. Like a very simple idea is just, you just tech in Ezreal. You just tech in Jin, if I can find him, there it is, George Washington. And like, you're done. And it's like good enough. Like this, this will get you through the game. Basically, you don't even have to itemize the Yorick here at all. But six Guardian, especially four Guardian right now, is super strong because the shielding just keeps stacking and stacking and stacking. You just have like this infinite frontline, right? So whenever you have something that gives like ramping damage, especially in the backline, something like the Jin, who's just gonna keep popping up turrets inside of your bench and just start dealing massive amounts of damage. Uh, this is incredibly good. You don't even have to stick around the AD. This is the most obvious idea, right? Playing around Big Shot. You can also do things that scale as the game progresses, things like Karthus, things like Ari, right? Things like units that are able to play around Archangels uh, is sort of the main idea here. Things like Twisted Fate with Ginsu Shiv GS, right? Playing around Dazzlers, for example, right? You have a lot of different things that are available to you when playing around Six Guardians. Again, it's a very, very, very tough front line and just whatever you want in the back line. Augments, especially like Ascension, are incredible for this kind of line. Um, moving on though, finally, let's talk about quickly Yorick within 10 Pentakill. We can't talk about this vertical without mentioning 10 Pentakill, an absolute insane vertical to hit. I have never ever seen 10 Pentakill and I don't know anybody who has seen it yet, but the idea is, is that you need two goddamn spats. You need two. You need all the pentakill units, there's only seven of them, plus the headliner to be plus two pentakill, so that's eight, plus two spads, that makes it to 10, and you need to be level 10 to fit everything on this board. The only way I could even see it like semi-feasible is if you hit like return on investment, and then you are rolling at nine to get a fawn, and then you're able to play like the two emblems that you happen to find along the way, which how the fuck did you do that? So this is a very like four fun chase trait, but I think if you manage to hit it, it's, uh, I mean, I would be amazed if this is not just like averages like a 1.1. Like this is an insane vertical to hit. I don't even know how the fuck you go about it, but it's here. So enjoy basket in its glory. You want allow, you want Kane, you want Vex. This is the best units that you can put in to be carrying the two emblems. Obviously you want Pentakill Kane over Vex. You get the idea though. Uh, super fucking strong, super fucking 
fun. Uh, again, a lot of units to cover. I did check the time just now because I wanted to check, you know, how we were doing, but there's a lot of shit to cover. I try to do my best to cover as much as I could. If there are any interesting lines in particular pertaining to Edge Lord, sorry, not Edge Lord, Pentakill headliners you that you think that I've missed, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Again, these videos are not supposed to be like, oh, every single S tier comp you can play around these headliners. No, it's supposed to familiarize you with all these headliner units, how to play around them in case they ever do become meta. And chances are throughout the entirety of the set, they definitely at one point in time definitely will become meta. So that basically does it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I did rush a little bit to try to get through everything because there is a lot, but I hope this was informative. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys all next time. So take care and happy climbing.